In this video, I'll be referring to the modem and the router as just the router. Most internet providers now combine them into one device anyways. If you don't know what a modem is, it basically connects your home to your internet service provider. But your router is the one doing all the heavy lifting, like managing the devices on your network and what data should go to what device and stuff like that. A modem provides internet access to only one wired device. Since most people have multiple devices and not all of them can be connected with the wire, the router will be that one wired device connected to the modem and it will create its own sub network so multiple devices can access the internet through the modem's singular connection. So just for simplicity, I'll just be calling the modem and the router just the router. If you run a server on your computer, like a website or even a Minecraft server, you will not be able to access it from outside of your home Wi-Fi network. That's just how most home networks are set up by default. Nothing is open to the public. If someone wanted to access your computer's server from outside of your network, they will need to ask the router. This is called making a request. If someone made a request for a website that is running on your computer, they will probably be sending a request on port 80. This is the default port that is used by most web servers. Now if you have no idea what ports are, let me explain it real quick. Imagine your house has a mailbox for every single port number. In this analogy, your house refers to a home Wi-Fi network. Now there's around 60,000 ports, but don't worry about that. Mailbox 1 would refer to port 1 and so on. Now imagine a letter is delivered to your home address to mailbox number 80. And it says, can you let me view your website? In this scenario, you are the router. All mail goes through you, and everyone else in your household would represent other devices in your network. First of all, if you have 60,000 mailboxes, you probably won't even know that you've received a letter. That means that particular port is closed, or in this analogy, the mailbox never gets checked. Data that is sent to closed ports are not read, they're just dropped. Second of all, if you got this letter out of the blue, you probably have no idea who this mail is meant for. Usually the devices in your network like phones and computers will initiate the connections, like watching a video or accessing a web page. But here, someone else is trying to initiate a connection with a device in your network, but you have no idea who it's meant for. You might be wondering, well why not? Doesn't each device have its own unique address? Well yes, but there are two types of IP addresses local and public IP addresses. Local IP addresses are also known as private IP addresses. Local IP addresses are used within a network so devices in that network can communicate with each other. Public IP addresses are used to communicate with devices outside of your network, like going to a website. Your devices do not have public IP addresses. They have local IP addresses and they are not used to access the internet. In your home, your phone could have the same exact local IP address as another phone in someone else's home. But it wouldn't matter because they are in entirely different networks and local IP addresses are used for local network communication only. If a device wanted to access the internet, they would need to ask the router. The router holds a public IP address which it can use to make and receive requests. If they tried to make a request to your computer's local IP address, it wouldn't even leave their network. Instead, their computer will recognize it's a local IP address and it will try to find that IP address in their network. So if someone outside your network requested to view a website, they would need to make a request directly to your router's public IP address. But now we have another problem. Your router will have no idea which device to forward this request to, since it wasn't configured beforehand. This is what port forwarding will solve. Now imagine there's someone else living with you. We'll just name him Tom. Tom represents another device in your home network. Let's say he wanted to claim a mailbox, like mailbox number 80. So whenever a letter is sent to mailbox number 80, he will be able to receive it. Now keep in mind, in this scenario, you are still the router. You manage everything that goes in and out of the house. Now you will constantly be checking mailbox number 80 for new letters because Tom has specified all letters from there should go to him. This means you are listening on port 80. Whenever you see a letter in mailbox number 80, you know exactly who to give it to. But that's not the end of the process. Each device has their own mailbox system like this. So Tom needs to specify 
which of his mailboxes to send it to beforehand. Let's say you're running a web server that's listening on port 8080, but you want it to be publicly accessible on port 80. You could tell your router to listen for requests on port 80 and send it to your server on port 8080. So if someone requested to view the website on port 80, your router will send that request to the server on port 8080. If someone outside of your network requested to view the website on port 8080, your router won't be able to provide the website because it only knows to forward requests coming from port 80. However, if someone inside of your network wanted to access the server, they can access it directly with the local IP address. They will not request your router's public IP address since they are in the same network and they can communicate locally. Because of this, your router will know who to send it to already. There would be no need for port forwarding. But they don't request on port 80, they request on port 8080 because that's what the web server is listening on. Port 80 is only used when someone outside of the network asks your router for the website. So to keep it simple, when the router is asked directly for the website, it will listen on port 80 to forward it to the web server. But if the web server is asked directly for the website, the router does not need to worry about forwarding ports, since it knows to just send it to the web server directly. Anyways, I hope this helped you understand what port forwarding actually is. In the future, I'd like to make more videos just like this, explaining server related topics as simple as possible so anyone can understand. I'm not really used to making animations like this, but I did try my best, so I hope that at least helped a bit. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.